Hey, before we get started with the show, I just wanted to give a quick note to the RPDs out there. And uh, I know your job is tough enough and you don't need something like this out there. Um, but do just make sure to check the uh, uh, spreadsheet or the Google Doc that this person's put up on Reddit about name and shame, which is, uh, they called it call outs, uh, so that um, if your program is on there, you can address it with your residency entering class because they're going to have seen it. Uh, it's almost you know, unfathomable that those coming in uh, wouldn't uh, be familiar with the document. But often RPDs are, are not aware of these kind of social media things that kind of pop up. So uh, if you're an RPD, make sure to check the, the Google Doc, make sure your program is not on there. Or if you're, you know, Birmingham VA, uh, Centers for Families and Children, Cleveland, Iowa, UNC, Tennessee, you know, kudos to you. You got some good comments. Uh, well done. So let's get started with the show and uh, kind of talk about how to use this uh, name and shame doc that's come up. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Remember the Pharmacy Podcast Network. I want to talk a little bit about call outs and the name and shame uh, thing that kind of goes on with uh, residencies. And uh, it's something that's really not taken effect yet with pharmacy, but we're going to see it quite a bit this year uh, as the number of residency placements continues to go up and the number of students available and wanting to do a residency goes down. So basically what's happened over the last while is that, you know, residencies have all the power because, you know, there are very few residencies relative to the number of people who want them. But as the number of residencies have gone up and as the number of people applying has gone down, uh, now it's going to be more residencies that are going to be in phase two and more residencies who are actually not going to match at all. Maybe they'll match in the scramble, uh, but uh, we're going to see that the number of residencies not matching at all because of working conditions uh, is not going to happen. So what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about how uh, there is a Reddit post and let me get the name of it. OK, and it's called Calling Out Programs open parentheses, Google Sheet, close parentheses. And it was posted by to the number soft kitty kitty. Uh, and uh, it just says uh, there's a lot of talk about re toxic residency programs. A lot of you are afraid to call your programs out due to retaliation. It's completely understandable, but I also understand you want to help future candidates avoid what you're going through. So this person created the Google Sheet so they can share the experience. And the way that you can share your experiences, I think you just Put a comment on there but it's locked so you can't um, uh, the, the programs can't just go in there and, and delete uh, the comments about them so the issue we have here is that uh, we have no way of knowing if this is just someone who's mad at the program and wants to put negative you know uh, publicity for them I guess you would say uh, or if it's a genuine concern with the program so again what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, just mention the five positive uh, programs, or five of the programs had very, very uh, positive notes, but for the most part, uh, the, the, the sheet is filled with um, things that you really, really do want to look out for uh, and watch out for. So uh, let's talk first about the five programs that were positive. So it was a Birmingham, uh, Cleveland, Iowa, UNC, and Tennessee. Uh, there are various programs within those uh, that had very positive uh, comments on that uh, Google Doc. But let's talk about the negative comments in a very general way, uh, in such a way that we can kind of avoid talking about individual sites. Uh, but if you want the link to that Reddit post, it's in the Pre-Residency Audio Academy. Uh, that's the free class for the P1s through P3s. I mean, if you're a P4 and just want to be in there, you can. Um, but uh, you just go in there and then you'll go down to uh, the top of the free general resources uh, in the pre-residency audio academy or you can just find it on reddit yourself all right um, one of the first uh, issues that uh, they have is the, number, the amount of support they get from the rpd now again some people are pretty autonomous and really didn't expect much support and others maybe felt that they were going to get more support than they did I think it's a little bit of a shock when you get into residency and realize you're on your own. You're you're the person in charge, and you know it's not another appy. Uh, it's a job, and you're being paid for that job, and you're you know you are hired as someone who is relatively autonomous. And there's one RPD, and usually many many residents. But 
the adage that the person who is above you as your boss, and I have an amazing boss here uh, at the college I work at, uh, is really, really one of the biggest you know, drivers of your, your happiness and success. And with the RPD comes the preceptors, you know, are the preceptors, uh, you know, the same way, are, are they very supportive in those types of things? Okay. Uh, one of the things that residents expect is that they're going to give some grace as they kind of uh, have this on-ramp. And some of them are going to get a little bit of grace and some of them are going to get a lot. Uh, but there is an expectation that the preceptors and the residency uh, program director will not talk down to them. And again, it, it really is a very personality-based thing. When someone says something that that can, you know, my kids, I know for sure, you know, one, uh, if a kid says something to one of my kids, they'd be like, whatever. And then the other one would take it very personally. So again, is this the site or is this the person and, and, and how they feel about it? Um, in terms of days a week for the rotation, so there are complaints of going way over the rotations uh, that they're supposed to and that the PTO that they're supposed to be able to take uh, is not there. What you really want to look for, though, are numeric, numeric <laughs> is that the word I want to use? Uh, just numbers that you can kind of look at and say, okay, well, what is a reasonable number of residents to be left? And I know that when you're going into this, you're thinking, well, shouldn't all the residents still be there? And the answer is no. Uh, no, I mean, there, things happen and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work out and that's fine. But when you see a number like, okay, half the residents are left and it's December, you know, or, you know, um, someone, there's a story about someone who uh, got released the month before they were supposed to graduate. Um, you know, uh, there's talk from the colleges that are around there that they will not apply there because they've already gone through appies there and they want nothing to do with it. Um, one of the ways to, to kind of check this is to see if you can actually get in touch with the residents themselves. Some residencies have absolutely no links or uh, emails or anything to the current residents. Others have full bios and their email addresses and, you know, contact us if you have any questions type of thing. So when you see the residents there and they can talk to you freely and it looks like they're, they're happy with what they're going through, then great, you know, good for you. Uh, but there are going to be some times where you're like, well, where are the residents? Those are the people I really want to talk to. Uh, and, you know, if they're not there, that might be a red flag. It might not. They might have something going on. Um, when you see that RPD thing, uh, you're going to see it over and over again that they're expecting this one person to kind of fill all these roles. And I can tell you that it's just a very difficult job because the RPD is not a job. It is a designation. Uh, and usually it's on top of the work that they already have to do. Uh, another thing was that sometimes there's a uh, misunderstanding as to what they offer and that, you know, you this uh, resident might have expected that, uh, this is the type of training they're going to get, a very specific type uh, in a very specific uh, pathophysiologic condition or with a patient population. And it turns out that that training that they cared about the most uh, is not the best or, not, or absent completely. And so that might trigger uh, one of these types of comments. Um, so when you talk about how well the residents actually get along with each other, Again, these are people that were, were not actually asked if they wanted to be together. They were just brought together as a group. And there's going to be a person who was a first choice. And there's going to be a person that's the last choice. And that separation can be from 1 to 36. So one person might literally have been their first choice. And one person might literally have been their 36th choice. And that might show through as the residency begins. Or it might not matter at all. Um, sometimes an entire system uh, is is not. Um, sometimes an entire system has either a toxic. They, you would say whether it's the program, sometimes whether it's the people, or sometimes it's just the way things are run that it just doesn't really work well for pharmacists to work uh, as well as they can or as well as they hope to. Um, 
when things go bad, what happens? What kind of support uh, do they get? And uh, there may be very little support. Uh, you might be on an island uh, and some people are able to handle that and others are not. And it really depends on what kind of support structure you know you might have. Um, completion rates, you know, how, how often do they complete? And we already saw this with PGY2 where uh, there are more PGY2 openings than there are those that were denied uh, in the actual. So let's be very specific about this. There are more PGY2 openings than there are people that were rejected in phase one. But that doesn't mean that there weren't more that never got an interview in the first place. So we're getting to the point where um, students are going to start rejecting. They are rejecting PGY2s already, and they're going to start rejecting PGY1s uh, if they're hearing things like uh, it is a toxic program. Um, again, there are some issues with uh, the actual area. So when you talk about a, a safe place to be, a lot of times hospitals are where they're needed most. So when you go to University of Southern California in Los Angeles and you go to the main campus, you know, I mean, you're, you're right by what was the Staples Center. And, you know, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. But if you want to go to USC Med, that is not in that beautiful, beautiful area. So when you're talking about the city, you really want to make sure that, OK, you know, I, I came from uh, Baltimore, so you know, that might not be as much of an issue for me, but somebody who went to a rural campus or a suburban campus, it's a very safe place, uh, might have a bit of culture shock if they get into uh, some of the uh, cities and the crime and the things like that. Um, sometimes you get into a program expecting that because of the title or because of you know, the, the national ranking of the hospital, that conditions will be very good. And that may or may not necessarily be the case. Okay. Um, in terms of warning, some are very <laughs> frank, uh, where don't recommend, absolutely don't apply, uh, you know, uh, avoid, um, those types of things. Uh, you know, issues with, you know, is the group of residents representative of the the class as a whole uh, who graduated from pharmacy school and we're talking about socioeconomic and racial and those types of demographics okay. um, let's see uh, we see burnout over and over again and a lot of times they're just saying that you know uh, the burnout is really really unnecessary it's just that uh, the the way that things are set up, um, it's going to cause that kind of issue. Uh, and then there's, uh, again, some very critical comments about um, some of the programs in phase two that are saying, you know, there's a reason they're in phase two, uh, you know, stay away and, and all of that stuff. And so what I would do is make sure that, you know, you check the, the, the Google Doc and, and you see if your program is on there that you're applying to. Or if you're a, an RPD, you want to make sure that uh, you're not on there. And it's not only phase two programs, it's phase one and phase two programs. And what I think this is, is a start of transparency that's necessary to have the safe working environments that you have. Because um, the amount of growth that has happened uh, in these residencies in the you know, hundreds each year um, is leaves a lot of leaves a lot to oversee and my understanding is that it's every eight years that you kind of go back up for your residency uh, you know accreditation and those types of things so they obviously can't see everything that's happening at every time and I think that many of the people that are putting these comments are doing them in the spirit of look i'm a health practitioner i protect people against you know uh, medical issues i want to protect my friends and the people that are that are coming into residency so again uh the 
it's on Reddit, and um, I think that uh, I think callouts uh, would be better served if we saw many, many more of these kinds of comments where we have a nice balance of the positive, uh, like with the, um, you know, the Birmingham VA and the, the, I think it was like Centers for Families and Children, Cleveland, uh, Iowa, UNC, and Tennessee, uh, that it wasn't just, okay, I'm upset, I'm gonna write on this sheet, but that you would take the time, uh, if you were a resident at one of these, to uh, write a detailed uh, comment that you know really gives somebody who's coming in a little bit more to, to look at and to say, okay, these are the things you want to check out. Like, why can't you get in touch with the residents? Where are the residents? Have they, you know, or have they not made it to the finish line? What happens, you know, when somebody doesn't pass the NAPLEX? because I'm going to have a conversation here very soon with um, Brandon Dyson of TLDR Pharmacy, and we're going to go over the MPJE, and uh, the fail rate is 50%, uh, in, or the CPJE is, is up to 50% in California, and it is extremely high for out-of-staters. So, you know, you, great, I, I you know, matched with a residency, I'm going to start my residency, what happens if you fail the MPJE? What happens if you fail the NAPLEX? So NAPLEX scores are still not out. It's uh, you know over the third past the third week of March. Uh, this is traditionally when they came out, um, but uh, they're still not out for the the current year. Uh, although some of the pharmacy schools have put on their websites, hey, we matched it or we've passed this NAPLEX rate and those types of things. So. Again, when we're in this phase two, I know that it's accelerated. I know you just put in your choices yesterday. I know that you have a week to kind of uh, start figuring this stuff out and, and get those interviews done. But um, do take the time uh, to make sure that, you know, if your program's on this list, just check to see, okay, hey, you know, can I verify uh, these comments that these people are making, uh, or is it someone who's just ranting and inventing and, and got this open platform to do it? Um, so uh, again, if you if you need help from me, um, I'm kind of mostly done for the season. I am helping a couple of people through phase two. Uh, but if you need help with the interview, I have the interview course. Uh, if you need help with uh, any cover letters as you're going to look for positions, uh, you can just sign up for the LOI course and I'll help you with the cover letters for your jobs uh, and those types of things. But again, just if you have a question, Tony the pharmacist at gmail.com. And again, I just uh, just like any other person that's that's uh, you know aware of this document, I just want to help protect you uh, from uh, an experience that you wouldn't need to have that you could avoid if you had you know multiple options and you're like, Oh, well, I, I think I would want to lean in this direction if the, the feedback is, is like that for it. Okay. So again, I wish you the best. Tony the Pharmacist at gmail.com.